BBOR Black Box Online Radio coming to you from West Virginia. Black Box Ned 88 on Instagram for the bonus podcast. And just a quick reminder every Monday is Zodiac Mondays. Wednesday is an Ask Me Anything. That's an AMA, so please drop your questions below for things that you would like discussed here on the show. And Friday is an Anything Goes. Any subject is fair game, mostly talking about true crime, serial killers, the Zodiac Killer, but any subject is welcome. All right, so please share some ideas in the comment section about what you would like to hear about on this channel, and let's get started. Okay, hello everybody. Today is Monday. Another Zodiac Monday. Welcome to the show. Today I'm going to be talking all about Arthur Lee Allen as a Zodiac Killer suspect, and you can see from the title here that this is the extended edition. I might be doing some more suspects, profiles, and responses to even some of the people who have already been covered on this channel under the extended edition series. So if you, there is a suspect that you would like to hear about, whether or not they've been mentioned before or not, you can put that in the comment section down below, always taking recommendations and suggestions for future episodes. And I want to know what you guys are curious about if you think that there is a person of interest, even if it's high on the general public's watch list or very low on the general public's watch list. You can always put your ideas in the comments section down below, or you can send them over to blackboxonlineradio at AOL.com. The email is in the description box. And I would like to remind you guys that in addition to hosting Black Box Online Radio, I'm also the host of Astro Psych 400. It's a different channel here on YouTube. But Astro Psych 400 is home to the podcast for sleep. Some people were saying that they use this program, Black Box Online Radio, to fall asleep at night. And I thought, why not create something specifically customized for that purpose? And that comes out on the weekends on Astro Psych 400. I invite you to like and subscribe to this channel or that channel. And another great way to support the shows is to go over to Amazon.com and have a look at the book Killer on a White Horse by me, Ned DeHaan. It is a novel murder mystery inspired by the Zodiac Manson connection, but it is indeed fictional. However, who doesn't love a good mystery? And there is always the Teespring page. Feel free to check out some of the merchandise. And remember, being weird is not a crime. And speaking of recommendations, earlier, several people requested a response to a particular video that was done about Arthur Lee Allen, who is the prime suspect in the Zodiac Killer mystery, that was called A Deathbed Confession by Arthur Lee Allen, Prime Suspect Zodiac Murders. And that one is available on the channel Zodiac, we called him Mr. Allen, Arthur Lee Allen, and it shares some testimony from some people who are known as the Seawaters, that's their last name, Don Connie and David Seawater, and not only is there a video out that's about 15 minutes long, but there are lots of comments that have been shared from the family. Dave Seawater has posted a lot in the comments section, as well as the channel um, is also responding to people and sharing lots of info. But before I talk about any of that, some more basic info on Arthur Lee Allen. He was born on December 18th, 1933 in Honolulu, Hawaii. He died on August 26th of 1992 in Vallejo, California. He had a brother named Ronald Allen. His parents were Bernice and Ethan Allen. Ethan Allen, great name to have. And he went to California Polytechnic State University. So, the Zodiac Killer operated in 1968 and 1969 beginning with the Lake Harmon Road murders in, on December 20th of 1968 and culminating with the Stein murder on October 11th of 1969. No matter how many times I say it, I always find it rather shocking that the Zodiac's reign of terror, if you will, was less than one calendar year, less than 12 months of serial killer activity. This is very abnormal for serial killers, but um, it's possible that the Zodiac killer was operating as early as 1962 or 63 or 66. There are lots of unconfirmed crimes that people try to attribute to the Zodiac Killer. And then the same with going forward in time after 1969, whether it's the disappearance of Donna Lass in 1970 or the murder of Joan Webster in 1981 or the Sacramento Freeway murders in 1986. So some people really try to go in the opposite direction. But Arthur Lee Allen was born on December 18th, and he would have had all of the canonical crimes occurring within one 12-month cycle of his life. In short, 
they begin almost immediately after his birthday. It's not on his birthday, but two days later, December 20th of 1968, would have been the Lake Herman Brew murders. And because he was born in 1933, then Arthur Lee Allen would have been 35 at the time. And I have said frequently on the channel that I think the Zodiac Killer was somebody who was in his early 30s to early 40s, so that does seem to work out as well for some of my other observations. But there was another reason why I wanted to do this episode, the Arthur Lee Allen Extended Edition, and there's an article out there from Thought Catalog called The Best Arguments That Arthur Lee Allen Was the Zodiac Killer by Chrissy Stockton, and I wanted to respond to it. First, to give it a quick read. The Zodiac Killer is an unknown murderer who terrorized Northern California in the 1960s and 70s, primarily targeting couples parked at Lover's Lanes. He communicated regularly with the police and the media, sometimes through ciphers. One of the main suspects police liked for the Zodiac was a veteran former school teacher who was fired after he was caught molesting children. The man. Arthur Lee Allen was considered by many to be the prime suspect in this unsolved case. This theory was advanced by Robert Graysmith, a former political cartoonist for the San Francisco Chronicle at the time of the murders, who went on to write the book Zodiac, published in 1986. John Douglas, the FBI profiler Mindhunter is based on, says that many serial killers wish to be in the armed forces and serve as police officers, but lack the social skills to succeed in these jobs. Arthur Lee Allen served in the Navy, but was dishonorably discharged in 1958 for an undisclosed reason. Another common trait of serial killers is animal abuse. This is one of the three characteristics in the McDonald Triad, which is a predictor of future violent serial offenders. Allen's sister-in-law, Karen Allen, has said that Allen mutilated animals as a child. I will definitely respond to that later on, but I want to keep reading. In 1974, he was fired from his job as a school teacher. After he was caught molesting students, he was convicted and spent three years in a Toscadero State Hospital. During the time Allen taught, he was also disciplined for carrying a gun on campus. While working as a teacher, Allen used only one sick day. This was the day that Sherry Jo Bates was stabbed to death at Riverside City College. This isn't an official Zodiac killing, but many people with familiarity in the case consider Bates to be the first murder victim of the Zodiac. Well, one person who heavily disputes that is me, Ned Dahan from Black Box Online Radio. Sherry Jo Bates was murdered on October 30th of 1966, and it was a very vicious and confrontational attack, whereas the Zodiac Killer's crimes in 1968 and 69, or, or what I said in last week's episode, cowardly, barely even coming face-to-face -face with the victims, or if the Zodiac did come face-to-face -face with Brian Hartnell and Cecilia Shepard at the Lake Berryessa stabbing, he wore a hood, a mask, concealing his face, blindsiding Paul Stein in the taxi cab, a single gunshot. He could have mutilated Paul Stein's body in the taxi cab very easily, but he cut off a piece of the shirt instead to mail it in as proof. Sherry Jo Bates was viciously attacked outside of the RCC library. I just think that that is a very different crime, but that's just um, my opinion, though. I will also state something, though, that it's a little bit more factual, and that was from Soren Korsgaard's book, America's Jack the Ripper, when he cited a press release from 1982 where it says that the Riverside PD had distanced themselves from any type of Zodiac killer connection, and they no longer believed that it was a viable theory. But let's go back to this point here about the McDonald triad, where... This um, article from Thought Catalog is citing Karen Allen is saying that Arthur Lee Allen muted, mutilated animals as a child. Well, if even if that is true, he definitely would have had some type of change of heart about that because his best friend Glenn Reinhardt says that Arthur Lee Allen was very kind and gentle to animals. He liked chipmunks, and that was featured in another article. And also, um, there was a video that was posted on Zodiac Killer Official, the YouTube channel, that shows Arthur Lee Allen with his dog. I think that those violent tendencies towards animals must have disappeared in some way, somehow. And just to provide some clarity, the McDonald Triad here, and there was a, they, 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 have a, they have an explanation on that, is cruelty to animals, obsession with setting fires, and persistent bedwetting past a certain age can lead to violent behaviors, particularly homicidal behavior and sexual predatory behavior. However, other studies claim to have not found statistically significant links between the triad and violent offenders. But even if there are statistics out there that say that there isn't this link, if someone is cruel to animals first and then 
it only makes sense that that is going to later on escalate into some type of deviant behavior toward people. And one thing that is definitely, definitely observed in almost all of the true crime and serial killer literature is that somebody is going to first try to do a crime, like let's say harming animals, and they want to increase the thrill experience. They want to do something that is more exhilarating. Perhaps you've heard of the concept of thrill killing. They just have to do something more and more intense, more and more extreme. So a natural progression as well would be to escalate from harming animals to harming people. Why? Because as the Zodiac Killer wrote in the 408 Cipher as clear as day, because man is the most dangerous animal of all. Here are some other points from Thought Catalog about how Arthur Lee Allen could be the Zodiac Killer. Allen's shoe size was similar to footprints found in the Zodiac crime scenes, but I do have to point out one thing about that. The footprints that were collected from Lake Berryessa, where that was on September 27th of 1969, the stabbing where, as I said, the Zodiac was wearing the hooded costume, those were from Wing Walker shoes. And Arthur Lee Allen was reported to have not worn wing walker shoes. He mostly wore sneakers or tennis shoes. The next point, Allen owned a Zodiac watch, which is where the symbol for the Zodiac is thought to have originated. Yeah, I'll definitely give you that one. And not only did Arthur Lee Allen wear the um, Zodiac watch, particularly the one for diving, because Arthur Lee Allen was actually a very accomplished diver. And even though he walked with a slight limp, he was a good diver, as well as a trampoline gymnast, and he could do tricks and such. But also, in Zodiac Unmasked, I read from Robert Graysmith himself that Arthur Lee Allen wore his Zodiac watch when he was interrogated by the police. That is some hardcore trolling, no matter what the end result is. Police officers thought that the Allen's gait was similar to that described by Zodiac survivors. I don't recall too much of that, to be honest, because... Drew Beeson did a live stream last weekend on his channel, and he was talking about that exact subject, and the thing that he likes to bring up is Arthur Lee Allen was reported to have had bad feet. He had gout in his feet, and what the survivors, particularly Brian Hartnell at Lake Berryessa, said was the perpetrator was walking briskly toward them, not showing any sign of having gout in his feet, and that's the reason why he wore the uh, sneakers and did not wear shoes like wing walkers, was because... um because he had bad feet, so I will also uh, bring up someone that Drew Beeson likes to talk about, and that is Donald Lee Cheney here in Thought Catalog. Alan had a six-year friendship with a man named Don Cheney. Cheney said the friendship ended because he was creeped out that Alan might be the Zodiac Killer. Cheney eventually went to the police and told them that Alan had said that he fantasized about killing couples at random, that he desired to be called Zodiac, and that Alan signed letters with the symbol of the Zodiac, the same way that the killer did, that he attached a flashlight to his gun in a similar manner to the Zodiac, and that he described preying on women by sabotaging their vehicles in a similar manner to Kathleen Johns and possibly Sherry Jo Bates. See, that's the problem, though, and if you ever read Zodiac Unmasked by Robert Graysmith, it is just filled with these things about Don Cheney's like, oh, yeah, yeah, Lee Allen said this. I mean, like, Lee Allen said that. It's just, it's so overwhelming to the point where you have to be suspicious. I mean, did he actually say all these things? I'm going to call myself Zodiac and I'm going to go around and kill people. I personally believe that those conversations did not happen, that Don Cheney is just making it up and... He is just fabricating this narrative against Arthur Lee Allen, and the the motives could be very questionable. Some people think it's because, as Arthur Lee Allen was a child molester, that he molested Don Cheney's daughter, and that um, this was a revenge ploy. And I was discussing this when I appeared on Planet X Filmworks with Ross and Mike Morford, and we were saying, like, about... Why would this happen? I mean, why would somebody do that? And one of the other panelists brought up and said that, well, Don Cheney was somewhat afraid of Arthur Lee Allen. Allen was definitely viewed as the tougher, more, more of the brawn of the friendship, whereas Cheney could be viewed as the brains of the friendship, so to speak. So this would be a way to get back at Allen without actually breaking anything to the surface. I personally do not believe that the molestation actually happened. And um, for, for starters, Don Cheney spent at least six months as Alan's friend as well. And in all seriousness, it's just possible that Don Cheney was making it up. And I really have to give a lot of credit to the YouTuber Brianne Clark, because she made one quotation in one of her YouTube videos about Arthur Lee Allen. 
And I say it all the time, because she said Arthur Lee Allen was a sex offender who not only had some accusations against girls, but a sex offender who also targeted boys. Where is the evidence that the suspect that we need targeted boys? Where's the evidence that the Zodiac Killer targeted boys? Where's the evidence that the Santa Rosa Hitchhiker Slayer targeted boys? Like a, a serial killer who was a sexual predator toward males. I mean, like, I just don't see an ounce of sexual predatory behavior in any of the Zodiac crimes from 68 to 69. Now, if you want to talk about someone who has some type of heterosexual animosity, perhaps, but just having heterosexual animosity isn't enough. Arthur Lee Allen was not only an accused sex offender, he was convicted of it. It's so much more than just this accusation about Helen and Don Cheney's uh, daughter, and Don Cheney's daughter denies that that ever happened, mind you. But Helen was convicted for that. You heard this. He spent time in a Toscadero State Hospital for his pedophilia, or perhaps sex crimes is a better way to describe it. And now I would like to discuss the YouTube video that was put out, a deathbed confession by Arthur Lee Allen, prime suspect, Zodiac Murders, that I previously cited, where you can hear a lot of the testimony of Connie and Dave Seawater, and the nutshell version is that shortly before Arthur Lee Allen died, that he made a confession to being the Zodiac Killer. And the family has some awareness of this to the point where it became a guarded secret. In addition to confessing to being the Zodiac, Arthur Lee Allen also broke down in tears and admitted something that was a little bit more personal to them, that he had molested Connie, the daughter, and also possibly did something to Dave. No matter what, um, I absolutely am so sorry to hear that about them, that they had to have these types of experiences or that they would have learned about it in this way, but the description of the video is as follows. This is a video that recaps David's phone call to Mr. Arthur Lee Allen to say thank you as he was close to dying. The phone call came approximately 30 days before Arthur Lee Allen died from complications of alcoholism, diabetes, and heart disease. And they just wanted to point out that because it says deathbed confession, some people were trying to pick that apart, but they don't mean that he was literally on his deathbed. They just meant that he was in bad health and he, he made this uh, phone call or had this phone call with them rather 30 days before he died. And there's also a comment that is posted by the channel itself that says, To all, we have lived with this stuff for what ends up being our whole lives. Many people have had a diffi as difficult, if not worse, or more difficult lives. Our reason for not coming forward before this has a lot to do with our mother, who passed away several years ago. She ruled with an iron fist and a razor-sharp tongue. Our lives with Arthur Lee Allen started in 1960 and lasted until death in 1992. We will be releasing a couple more videos to kind of flesh out the whole of this. Like many other people have felt, we would welcome a production that would illustrate the incredible amount of intrigue involved with this. Thank you very much for all your feelings, no matter what they are. So, um, I mean, that definitely answered one of my big questions, because if there was a confession that was made in 1992, more than, well, I guess we're just approaching about 30 years now, but definitely more than 25 years ago, why wouldn't people come forward more, especially for something like being the Zodiac Killer? Bear in mind that this would have been after the publication of Robert Graysmith's 1986 book Zodiac and Gareth Penn's 1987 Times 17. So the Zodiac is becoming more popular on a national circuit, as well as people having a definitive first-hand connection to Arthur Lee Allen. And they heard this confession about him being the Zodiac Killer. Why wouldn't they just be like, hey, law enforcement, I have to talk to you about this? Or forget law enforcement calling in the media. And this is, uh, you know, somewhat of a reasonable explanation. As I said, it turned into a guarded family secret. And I don't mean to read too much from the comments section on somebody else's YouTube channel, but I did want to read this one that came from Captain J about the concept of either Dave or Connie hearing this alleged confession from Arthur Lee Allen. Particularly, it's Dave on the phone, Dave Seawater, that is. But somebody asked the question, did David ever call the police about this? And Dave Seawater actually responded in the comment section down below saying, Yes, we did. I talked to SFPD and they blew us off. Although my brother and sister were interviewed and were told by the police that they knew it was him but couldn't prove it before my call with him. Thank you for the question. I want to be 100% honest. 
I do not doubt the Seawaters at all about any personal experience that they have had with Arthur Lee Allen. I mean, that's their story. If um, I do not ever want to call someone out on anything like that, if they're talking about an experience of being molested and they say that either they remember it clearly or in this particular case that they uncovered information that led them to believe that, that Arthur Lee Allen molested Connie, I would never doubt someone on that. Absolutely not. And that is just um, absolutely saddening, but also that is somewhat typical behavior for Arthur Lee Allen, so there's no reason to doubt that in the first place. But I am very skeptical of this deathbed confession that Lee Allen confessed to being the Zodiac Killer over the phone about 30 days before he died. No matter what, I believe that this confession would have surfaced before 2022 if there were indeed this 30-year gap. And not only had Graceman's book already been out, but then the Fincher film comes out in 2007, which can talk all about Arthur Lee Allen as a suspect again. He's played by John Carroll Lynch. It's a reawakening and revival to the world about how Arthur Lee Allen could possibly be the Zodiac Killer. But in addition to this, as I said, Drew Beeson did a live stream, and I was not a guest on that one, but I was in the comments section talking to people. They got on the subject of Arthur Lee Allen and a particular story that was shared by Robert Graysmith, and that is that shortly after the Lake Berryessa stabbing by the Zodiac Killer, Arthur Lee Allen was seen with two bloody knives on the seat of his car. And I said that I had heard that that was actually Graysmith, once again, doing his Graysmithing, as Drew would say, stitching together two ideas that do not belong. Sometimes people use the term splicing together two ideas that do not belong belong, and that was not Arthur Lee Allen at all. What Graysmith was actually doing was taking the story of a motorist from Ukiah, California, and putting that into Arthur Lee Allen's narrative, saying something that was half true and half false again. And I have to give a shout out to Andrew Gray, who wanted to give me some clarity by sending this into the email address, blackboxonlineradio at AOL.com. He says, Hi Ned, I believe this is the suspicious Ukiah motorist you referenced in the chat on Drew Beeson's latest live stream. And he sent me an article from ZodiacCiphers.com. Zodiac Ciphers is run by Richard Brunel, who does an absolutely excellent job with this. If you're curious about the Zodiac Killer mystery, I hope you are reading ZodiacCiphers.com. It is an excellent website. It's talking, and this article here is actually called The Shadow of Murder and Coincidence, which is talking all about the motorist who did indeed have these bloody knives on in his car. And his name is Bruce, Bruce Kenneth Swanson. I almost stuttered on that name. Bruce Swanson perhaps will be a little bit easier for me to say rapidly. And this um, was not even on September 27th of 1969. It says here he first came attention to, atten to the attention of the newspapers on October 21st of 1969 regarding the Zodiac case when he underwent six hours of questioning in Ukiah, California. Bruce Swanson, age 30, was arrested by California Highway Patrol for speeding along Highway 101, just north of Ukiah, suspected of failing to pay a Ridgewood Motel bill. When his vehicle was searched, they found a 14-inch knife and a bloody shirt and a pair of shoes and a woman's handbag. They also noted a resemblance to the infamous Zodiac Killer composite sketch, presumably from Lake Berryessa. Yes, um, I think that's referring to the sketch of the Lake Berryessa voyeur, as opposed to the ones that were done after the Stein shooting with the uh, glasses and such. They also noted a resemblance to the infamous Lake Berryessa sketch. However, after Napa law enforcement had traveled to Ukiah for a sit-down with Bruce Swanson, the gift of gab was in his favor. That's for Bruce. The police allowed him to go on his merry way, satisfied with his explanations. Wouldn't you have just loved to have been a fly on the wall in that interrogation room? Uh, yeah, but only if they're asking good questions. Bruce Swanson grew up in San Bernardino County and was a 1957 graduate of Pacific High School, married his wife Barbara Ann Gaines at the Holy Rosary Catholic Church, honeymooned in Santa Barbara, and then moved to 1267 Mount View Avenue, San Bernardino. If this is the correct location, it's within 7.5 miles of the Redlands home of Elizabeth Lorene Ernstein, who went missing on March 19th of 1968. This article also points out that he would have only lived 11.6 miles from the murder of Sherry Jo Bates, and I know some people are already thinking 
that there is Highway 101, which I believe is the road that was used in the Domingo Edwards murders in 1963. Some people are absolutely convinced that the um, Domingo Edwards murders were committed by the Zodiac Killer, and other people like me are very skeptical. I mean, I've definitely entertained the possibility, and I said also with the Sacramento Freeway murders of 1986, even though I'm not 100% convinced that that was the Zodiac Killer, I've definitely thought about that. And um, also on that live stream that I keep uh, citing that came out over the weekend, there was some talk about how someone made a confession that, um, or they recall that they were with Arthur Lee Allen on June 4th of 1963, and he parked the car, and then he went down to the beach, and then he came back, and he had blood on his clothes. I simply think that it's a story like that would be implausible. I'm not sure who exactly came up with that one. But um, there was uh, some discussion about that. But when people are giving those types of details, that what you're in the car with Arthur Lee Allen, he parks the car, and then he's just going to walk down, commit a double homicide, and then walk back with blood all over his clothes. And again, that's not even 30 years. That's been, oh, that would have been 55, 56, 57 years ago. I mean, a long-ass time ago. And... Nothing happened after that, like he just never gets busted for it with all of the amount of um, investigations into him. Arthur Leon has really been the only public Zodiac killer suspect identified by law enforcement, and not only did they view him as a, an actual suspect, they had search warrants written where they went into his home, and that's really what it is when they say that he's the only public suspect. He's the only person who actually had his home raided because of the Zodiac killer case. Yeah, they have a list of 2,500 suspects, of course, but Arthur Lee Allen really became the prime suspect. So, um, but the, so there is this story, though, about how there was a, indeed, a motorist outside of Ukiah, California. I always used to call it Ukiah, California, because I'm a West Virginian and I don't really know these places firsthand. But Ukiah, California, and his name was Bruce Swanson. And then tragedy struck the Swanson family with his wife apparently committing suicide and killing their three children. Mother of age 28 kills three children and self. And um, that was cited by the Associated Press featured on ZodiacCiphers.com. That story ended in absolute tragedy. And in some of the first episodes that I ever did about the Zodiac Killer here on Black Box Online Radio, I went over to ZodiacKiller.com and I used uh, some of those pro suspect profiles that were written out there as source material. So right now I would like to do that as well. Look at the, at the profile on ZodiacKiller.com about Arthur Lee Allen. Arthur Lee Allen's connections to the Zodiac Killer began on October 30th, 1966, when Sherry Jo Bates was stabbed to death at the Riverside City College, RCC in Riverside, California. In late November, two anonymous typewritten Bates murder confession letters were mailed to the local police and newspaper. The typewriter was identified as being a royal model with either elite or pika type. Allen was allegedly in Riverside the weekend of the Bates murder. The information placing Allen in Riverside was developed in 1971 by the Vallejo Police Department and the California Department of Justice. Allen later hinted that it was true, first claiming that he had been in the area at the time, then telling people that he was in nearby Pomona when he first heard of the Bates murder. Employed as an elementary school teacher in California's Calaveras County at the time of the Bates murder, by the time of his employment ended in 1968, Allen had only used 19 available sick days. Allen was absent on November 1st, 1966. And um, Sherry Jo Bates was murdered on October 30th in the late p.m. hours. Her body was found on October 31st in the early a.m. hours. And then you heard that there about November 1st, 1966. Initially, Allen attributed the absence to school business. He was later charged with a sick day. Did Allen stay an, a, an extra day or two in Riverside, gathering secondhand information to use in the anonymous confessions? Or did Allen actually kill Bates, missing work on November 1st because of facial wounds inflicted by the victim. And yes, Sherry Jo Bates, as I said, it's a very um, confrontational attack. She would have been scratching at her attacker. They may even have some actual DNA under the um, fingernails that might be a little bit more difficult to extract, but she put up a strong fight. And that's one reason why some people even doubt the Riverside Confession was um, written by the actual killer of Sherry Jo Bates because it talks about how Miss Bates went to the slaughter like a lamb. But people are like, well, she didn't exactly 
go very easily. She really fought for her life, and she may have ripped off the perpetrator's watch, pulled out chunks of his hair. It would have been very confrontational. So, um, modern FBI profiles on serial killers usually say that during periods of activity, the killer will behave erratically, exhibit moodiness, drink or smoke more than usual, and miss work. And uh, believe it or not, I think that um, I would agree with those things, because especially if you're dealing with a serial killer who is not going to um, be operating extremely frequently, and no matter what, though, I mean, this isn't even something that we can debate. 1966 to 1968, that's more than a two-year gap from the murder of Sherry Jo Bates to the first um, Zodiac crime. And some people think that it's just that, that some, there was a serial killer that operated in 1966, and then the next crime occurred in 1968. Now, some people believe that that is incorrect, and that Nikki Benedict was indeed a Zodiac killer victim who was murdered on May 1st of 1967. But everybody has their own theory. But um, I did say that in the Nikki Benedict episode. That is one explanation about why there would not be a two-year gap between Sherry Jo Bates and Lake Harmon Road. But um, about this thing about exhibiting moodiness and drinking or smoking more than usual, oh, sure. I mean, you'll see this time and time again if you're watching serial killer documentaries. And I think it's because even though they're th that serial killers don't tend to worry too much about this, I think that they also want to put on a facade that everything is normal and for that they might over overcompensate by drinking or smoking or let's not kid ourselves deranged behavior would explain the excessive moodiness i mean these people are hardly emotionally stable if they are serial killers i think that goes without saying during the execution of a 1991 search warrant vallejo pd seized a royal typewriter with the elite type from the home of arthur lee allen in late April 1967, three anonymous letters referring to the Bates murder were mailed. Well, um, I don't... I, I mean, those um, have been possibly, most likely, determined to have been a hoax. And this was uh, posted um, back in 2021 that somebody had confessed in 2016 to have written the Bates had to die letters. These are the three letters that say Bates had to die. One of them says she had to die, there will be more, because that was the one that was mailed to Sherry Jo Bates' father. And that is, um, well, that's some, a statement that was made by the authorities. Somebody made the confession in 2016. They checked him out. They located the person. They identified him. And they determined that he was not the murderer of Sherry Jo Bates nor the Zodiac killer. I don't know his name, and I'm not sure if it's ever been public. But going back to the profile here, we read a lot from Don Cheney, and there's already um, a section here in... The ZodiacKiller.com suspect profile about Don Cheney's confession. I should say confessions. His um, retelling of the story of Arthur Lee Allen about how he wants to target couples and use the name Zodiac. But there's also something here about a friend named Philip. According to a police statement, in an early 1968 conversation with his friend Philip, Allen is alleged to have been fascinated with the concept of hunting people. According to Allen, people would be more challenging to hunt than animals because they have intelligence. On July 31st of 1969, the Zodiac mailed a cipher to the media. Within days, it was solved, and it says killing man was more fun than killing wild game in the forest because man is the most dangerous animal of all. Now, there's a section here that really gets into the material that Graysmith likes to harp down on in his books about the motive. Like, why would Arthur Lee Allen commit the crimes at all? And Graysmith more or less talked about how Allen was trying to rebuild his ego after his life fell apart. And on ZodiacKiller.com, there's a section here. Certainly being a child molester didn't help Arthur's status around the house. Allen began gaining weight, drinking heavily, eventually taking a part-time job as a service station attendant. By winter, Allen was in a downward spiral of depression and alcohol abuse, mostly amplified by two major stressors, his birthday and Christmas. And Allen's, again, born on December 18th. So, the apparently motiveless Lake Herman Road murders occurred on December 20th of 1968, just two days after Allen's birthday on December 18th, and before Christmas on December 25th. Profiles indicate serial killers are always active in areas they are very familiar with. Allen was only living about seven minutes from Lake Herman Road. He had an explosive temper and was known to park and drink alcohol in rural areas, such as Lake Herman Road, and always carried weapons in his automobile. So, um, 
I mean, that I think perhaps is a fair synopsis of Arthur Lee Allen, that he was an accomplished diver. He was actually very good at it. But then he um, just had these problems with his sexual deviant behavior. His career fell apart. His life fell apart. And Graysmith also talked about this in Zodiac Unmasked when he said, Allen would just sink deeper and deeper into debt and just let it happen. Because uh, somebody asked a question about that when you hear these things about Arthur Lee Allen having like the multiple trailers and he was even entertaining being like a, like a, a hobbyist pilot at once. Well, how can he afford to do all these things if he always has unstable employment? Well, he would just sink deeper and deeper into debt and uh, just let things like that happen. Blue Rock Springs. The Zodiac attacked a couple on July 4th of 1969 and was the second within seven months to occur on the eastern outskirts of Vallejo. This time, Zodiac was only about four minutes from Arthur Lee Allen's homes. Major holidays can bring out ugly behavior in people, and Allen was already dealing with unemployment and alcohol abuse. The male victim, Mike Majot, survived, and Mike Majot gave the police a description of the Zodiac X car. Brown in color, possibly a Corvair, and at the time, Allen had a friend named Philip who was trying to sell his brown Corvair. According to a police statement, Philip's Corvair was parked in the front of a service station in Vallejo, where Allen had recently been employed, and the key was inside the office. Philip had occasionally allowed Allen to drive the Corvair. That the possibility exists that Allen either had a key to the car or the service station where it was parked. So, the concept of committing a crime in somebody else's car, so it couldn't be traced back to him. Well, that, um... That almost never works. I repeat, almost, almost. Additionally, there are potential connections between Blue Rock Springs and um, the Blue Rock Springs victim, Darlene Farron and Arthur Lee Allen. In 1966 to 67, Farron worked as a waitress at the International House of Pancakes on Tennessee Street in Vallejo, less than one tenth of a mile from Allen's home at 32 Fresno Street. About that time, Allen is alleged to have told Don Cheney that he was fond of a waitress from the restaurant. I just don't know if there is a solid um, Alan Darlene Farron connection. I'm really quite skeptical of that. And that goes on for a while, so I would encourage everybody to read the full profile about Arthur Lee Allen at ZodiacKiller.com, as well as responding to some of the content here on um, Black Box Online Radio. There really is so much that we could go into about Arthur Lee Allen. And there was even a video that was posted on Tom Boyd's YouTube channel talking about how Alan got a speeding ticket. What was it? I, wa I don't want to mess up the date. March 13th, 1971, was it? When um, he got a traffic violation ticket in um, the city, and then that was the day that the Zodiac Killer mailed a letter from Pleasanton, California. So is it possible that Alan went 40 minutes outside of his normal uh, trajectory just to make it look like he couldn't be placed to a pr in a particular area? I don't know. I don't know, but I mean, there are just countless things that we could talk about with Arthur Lee Allen, and um, we could even go into some things about um, profiling. Do you think that it's appropriate for um, someone like him to be the Zodiac Killer, or do you think that he checks all the boxes? Do you think the Zodiac Killer was a homosexual the way that Allen was? He was almost definitely a bisexual who targeted both boys and girls. If I had to make a definitive ruling right now, I would say that I think the Zodiac was heterosexual. And you would also have to wonder, why didn't the Zodiac Killer target victims who would have um, been closer to the child age? Because that's what Arthur Lee Allen was known to do. I mean, Paul Stein was 29 years old. What do you make of the explanation that Allen committed these crimes as a way to rebuild his shattered ego? I would love to reread your responses in the comment section down below. I'd love to read anything that you guys have to say about Arthur Lee Allen and the Zodiac Killer. And the biggest challenge question of all is, do you think that Lee Allen was the Zodiac? You can respond in any way you like. And as always, you can like and subscribe. Visit Astro Psych 400. All kinds of things here. Thank you so much to everyone who has contributed material, whether I got it from your channel or just things that I've read off in the comments section. Of course, to ZodiacKiller.com, ZodiacCiphers.com. Thank you so much one more time. And I will see you over on Instagram for the bonus podcast. Until next time.